Okay, so I'm with Whitney Hillier today, who plays on the Ladies European Tour and the Australian Ladies Professional Tour. Uh, Whitney's based in the UK, currently in lockdown like the rest of us. Um, how are you finding that? Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, finding it good, actually. I'm a pretty positive person, so, you know, you get to take the most out of everything, and I, I always keep active, and, you know, you keep yourself busy, so I'm doing okay. I'm good. <laughs> so what are you doing to keep yourself busy? Uh, cooking a lot, actually. Um, well, I mean, coming from Australia, I'm not into roast as much, but because yeah. I've been in England, I've learned so much about it, and I love it. Uh, love you love a roast. roast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Learned how to make perfect Yorkshire puddings as well. So. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what's odd about that? Most people in the UK don't know how to. <laughs> if they don't come pre-made by Aunt Bessie, they're, they're, they're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely learn how to do it <laughs> by scratch. <Okay, yeah. laughs> but no, yeah, yeah, keeping busy, doing lots of cooking, jigsaw puzzles, things like that, lots of exercise. So yeah, no, yeah. it's it's good. Okay, well, you sat, you sound like you're in the right frame of mind. So how long have we got now until the um, season starts? It's March the uh, May the eighth, twelfth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the first tournament is in South Africa. So obviously, as long as the rules are okay for us to go, uh, I yeah, I can't wait to get out there. It's obviously a bit of a wait since the last tournament. Uh, the last one I played in Spain, which was the last week Gosh. of November. Yeah. And our next next one is May. So it's been a little while since I've been working, but I've, I've actually been able to practice a little bit as well. So, so you have uh, access to a club? Yeah, yeah. I play at Lincoln Golf Club uh, and they, they've been great to me. And, and because of the restrictions at the moment, I've only been allowed to use the range and I don't see anyone. So it's great. And I'm socially distancing. So... And I've yeah. got a special exemption for that to be able to practice. So my okay. off season has been going really well. And my coach, Stuart Brewer, he's my future father-in-law as well, actually. Um, but right. So we've been working together really hard and making sure my swing is intact and we're ready to go in May. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that, oh, that sounds positive. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think it's really important at this stage that, that, that we recognise the work that the LET have done this year yeah. because you know, Unreal. Uh, they got a lot of criticism because lots of other tours were out there playing and what have you but the people weren't seeing what was going on in the background all the planning and the preparation for what is just an incredible season so 27 events 19 countries 19 million euros prize money the um, link up with the Aramco um, mini series mm -hmm. I mean it is just incredible right uh, it's, it's yeah. in the right direction yeah absolutely like uh our new CEO, uh, Alex Amkas, like she has, has been unbelievable since she started. And, you know, she, she really cares for us. Yeah. And, you know, she does so many things that we don't see yeah. <laughs> in the background. And, you know, to be able to, to make these tournaments happen, especially in a row, like if you actually go to the LET website and look at the schedule, it is unbelievable. Well, we'll, we'll, pop, we'll pop that up here so people can have a look. And, uh, yeah, definitely. But you're, you're right. so lucky. <laughs> so I, lucky to be on LET at the moment. You know, it's great. Yeah. And and and, and so so for you, um, for this season, do you have, before the season starts, do you set yourself a target? And is that target based on you would like to get so many T10 finishes? Uh, you'd like to make this many cuts? You'd like to obviously earn that amount of money but you know that sort of <laughs> comes in line yeah. with, with getting the results how, how mm -hmm. do you plan what your targets are um I like to just pretty much just do it step by step really um I try and think of results after you know yeah. so pretty much you know the cliche kind of thing you stick to the process and the results and the money will come afterwards so that's what I try and think of um but yeah no definitely lots of big goals and targets this year um especially like putting as well. Yeah. I've been uh, trying to get my putting together indoors, by the way. <laughs> right. Um, how, how many putters do you have? I know the answer to this question. <laughs> However. I've got a few. <laughs> but, but my fiancé, Ben, he's definitely got more than me. But no, I've, I've got a couple of good, really good put uh, ping putters as well, actually. So, right. no, it's uh, it's nice. But, no, it's uh, obviously I love to win out in the L LET. This is my eighth season on tour. Uh, so, uh, I'd love to have a win out there. I, I think I'm I'm ready and, you know, yeah. obviously taking that step. And I've had uh, a lot of good top tens. Uh, yeah. You've had some nice consistency, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And then and, and yes. then what, what, what gets you in the mindset? Uh, I would imagine, obviously, working with Stuart. Yeah. You know, when you're playing at the level that you play at, there's not a lot to tweak. And the, the tweaks are, are minimal in process, but massive in 
outcome I would imagine uh, absolutely right yeah like uh, having these sessions here it's actually been incredibly good for us because usually in a normal world I would be in Australia right now playing the Australian season and I would, wouldn't really technically have an off season right. so I would just have Christmas and then go again and then come to Europe uh, but now um, I know times have been really difficult but I've taken the positives out of it and actually started to make some changes on my swing and really get everything going together. And um, again, working with my coach, Stuart, you know, we've done a lot of really good progress and um, my swing feels really good at the moment and it's, it's yeah. getting better after every session. So, you know, you, you do little bits, well, obviously as best you can really, but um, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the season, but no, it's, it's, it's little steps. And, you know, you, you get get better and better every time. And obviously with so many tournaments in a row, that also yeah. helps with, um, you know, getting into your prime positions and, you so know. So for consistency, you don't like to, you know, there are a lot of players who like to play a week, have a week off, play a week, have a week off. You prefer to go back to back to back. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I mean, three or four would be the max for the normal uh person i guess um otherwise you just get absolutely worn out <laughs> um but no like in the past because the let have had um you know scattered events where you maybe it'd be one event a really good event and then it'd be two weeks off and then you have to get into your yeah. you know your prime game again and then you know you just got to keep practicing but now that to have that many tournaments in a row you can kind of pick and choose if that makes sense like yeah. Obviously, I want to pay, play every single one, but it's not realistic. Phys physically, you have to you know, look after yourself as well. So, you know, my goal would definitely be three, four, maybe five, depending on the situations of the, the golf tournaments and the majors, things like that. Obviously, you want to play all them. Um, but, you, yeah, you got to listen to your body at the same time. But to actually think like that now rather than, you know, in the past where we have had no choice events where you, okay I've got to go play this event and then you feel pressurized or whatever you feel um to play well uh you know I've actually got a nice schedule to yeah. play this year you know so many awesome opportunities and you know it's it's a great great chance for all of the girls on tour yeah. to you know really to <laughs> step up and do their thing is there any event that you're looking forward to more than the others? Oh, I mean, I will say every single one because I just love playing golf just in general. <laughs> like, this is what and I and do you think you might go into <laughs> politics after golf? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Quite. Um, well, um, I, I think the season looks incredible. Um, yeah. I, I, I think the earning opportunity. But I, 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 I want to focus on that for a minute because I mm -hmm. think the majority of people who look at you girls and they think you have a glamorous lifestyle. You're going to all these places in the world and, you know, you get treated like queens. We know that actually, you know, okay, it's a, it's a nice, nice lifestyle, but it's very, very tough, but also yeah. it's very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I think I was reading a report recently where before you struck a ball on the first tee, on the first day of the first tournament, you have had to consciously find 50,000 pounds, I would think, or, or whatever it might be, which is a huge commitment. Um, and yeah, yeah. if you don't have backing, you don't have support, you don't have sponsors, how do you go about doing that? So you're using last year's winnings to fund this year's season. Yeah. And, you know, it, to me, it just seems odd. So I want to talk about sponsors and I want to talk about um, support. And, and there are business owners on Clubface Golf and, and other platforms that are going to be seeing this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the reality of sponsoring a girl on the Ladies European Tour. Let's call it a yeah. ladies, ladies European tour. That's why it's called the Ladies European tour. Yeah. So, in its most crass form, let's be realistic. You're walking billboards. You're professional athletes, elite yeah. athletes, who are walking billboards. You have space on your chest. You have space on your arms. You have space on your hats if you wear a hat or a visor. Mm -hmm. Even golf the bags. Yeah. Golf bags. Mm -hmm. The sunglasses you wear could be branded. And and one of the things we do know about this coming season is the airtime given to the Ladies European tour has doubled to 200 yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. so the exposure opportunities are just incredible so yeah. how would somebody go about contacting Whitney Hillier and saying right Whitney I'd like to be on your sleeve uh, I'd like my company logo on your sleeve how would they go about that let's talk about that and and don't be conscious because I know you're a professional athlete you're not a salesperson 
but yeah, there's a reality yeah. here that we, we all have to face up to and that's we need mm-hmm. to fund this so how does somebody do go about that well you're more than welcome to email me anytime that's for sure <laughs> okay I, th- I think in the first thing because we probably don't want to give your email address out because you'll have all sorts <laughs> of, but but maybe that's send right. a message to Whitney on Clubface Golf or or send me a message or any of my team a message at Clubface yeah. Golf and we'll pass it straight on um yeah. but 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 seriously, ask the question. I think you'll be very surprised because I was. I was thinking of a number in my head of how much it might cost to sponsor. And it was probably a third of what I originally thought. And all it takes is one or two good p- t- tournaments or one good tournament. And you've got more exposure than your money could even cover. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, d- d- obviously, depending on what the company is is willing to give. But I, I'm more than happy to, to have any kind of monetary sponsorship at the moment. Like I've had nothing since 2014 so I, I've had to play well and actually use that money for obviously expenses so yeah I haven't uh, <laughs> I haven't paid much tax in a long time to be honest because my expenses just go <laughs> yeah I was like, every cloud <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah okay but but listen guys and, and I think it's a really important message these girls work their socks off and, mm-hmm. and, and I, one of the things I want people to think about, and I was talking about this with Steve Rutter yesterday. Yeah. So you started the tour when you were 22? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. 2013 yeah. I started, yeah. Yeah, so without giving your age away, and I apologise for that. So but, I'm only 30. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, you're then expected to jump on a plane, travel on your own in most instances, mm-hmm. get yourself to destinations, play events, get yourself through that, fed, watered, yeah. what have you, and then, at 23 years old, 22 years old, and then yeah. carry on maintaining that lifestyle. So it takes a real commitment and a real dedication. And I think, you know, and one of the things CFG will get fully behind is making sure that the girls on the tour get supported and get sponsored. So yeah. please, if you know, if you can, and it may, you know, whatever, whatever amount it is, come and have the conversation because you just don't know. Yeah, honestly, anything is greatly appreciated. And Absolutely. I am, you know, pretty uh you know I'm, I'm such a bubbly social person as well and I love pro and I love being active on social media and things like that and you know I'd be very proud to have any kind of company on my chest or sleeve or golf bag you know it's a two, it's a two-way street so we always have to look after each other you know absolutely uh, yeah. you, you look after me and I'll look after your company as well and do the best I can to advertise and you never know what you can get out of it right you meet the right people at the right times you just never know Absolutely. Let's talk about one one in particular, because you mentioned uh, um, on a post a couple of weeks ago, golf is CBD. And yes, I've heard of CBD. CBD. I, <laughs> well, I'd had this vision that CBD is something that, that um, well, it, it was part of the drug, but actually it's not. And I, I ordered yeah. some using your discount code. Awesome. Um, I, I ordered the gummy bears and I do a lot of running now. And I always found that the tops of my legs were, were really aching and what have you. I have a couple of these gummy bears. I go out for the run and I don't feel it at all. And you just chill out, right? It's, yeah. it's amazing what these uh, the CBD can do because, again, I, I was quite conscious as well because it's a new product and you want to make sure it's 100% legal. But these guys that go for CBD, like I know them and they mm. are incredible. Um, you know, a, a lot of the pros worldwide, they use CBD as well just to calm the nerves, chill out. Or if you have a really long day, you know, you have a gummy or spray after and then you can sleep really well. Yeah. You know, they, those little things, they, they help your body so much and, and obviously mentally as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, they're, they're a great company and I, I love being an ambassador for them as well. So, yeah, okay, yeah it's great. So Highly let's, recommended. <laughs> well, I, and I recommend it as well. And, and, and I'm glad you, know, you like it. Yeah, I did. And, and I'll be ordering again. And, and actually, when you order, they send you a discount code with your order for the next order. So, oh, awesome. It's a no brainer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, let, let's talk about what other support you do get. Um, are, are your clubs supported? Yes. So, I'm sponsored by Ping. Okay. Uh, the nice. Pink Factory is in Gainsborough and I'm in Lincoln at the moment. So it's really not that far. It's only half an hour away. So, no, yeah. they, they do look after me with clubs and um, it, I'm not contracted to them at all. But yeah. they, they give me golf clubs, uh, bag, umbrella, the towel, things like good. that. So yeah. and that's good. And I'm sponsored by Tyler's Foot Joy for gloves, balls and shoes as well. 
Um, so they give the European girls a, a really good contract for that as well. Good, good. Yeah. So uh, what's in the bag this season? So we know you've got pings. What, any particular new clubs that you're excited about to get out there and have a go at? Yeah, it's funny. I've actually got a fitting uh, end of this month uh, to try all the new gear. Uh, so I don't know what I will get, but I will post it on uh, Club Face Golf when I do get everything. <laughs> oh, super. Well, I, I look forward to that. I, I, I play pink cl- uh, clubs. I've only ever yeah. used pink clubs. And, mm-hmm. and for me, it's a psychology. Um, yeah. You know, I, 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 my dad's just bought a brand new set of tailor made, and they look marvellous and what have you, and they, they feel great in the swing. But for me, it's just a psychology that... Mm-hmm. If I'm not, if I'm, I've always played ping, so why it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, you, you just have to be comfortable, right? Yeah, and then yeah. you just enjoy enjoy the game. That's it. Yeah, and I, I tried the. I played at a society match when we had the little gap that we could play in um, mm-hmm. last year, and it was at the G410. Um, I I had to go oh my goodness I mean I I have a natural (laughs) fade and it just straightened it right up it was just incredible and I was like okay I'm sold I'm getting one (laughs) (laughs) so okay so um, they look after you you, what about management do you have a management company or do you manage yourself me I am the manager (laughs) okay (laughs) so all the buck stops with you yeah yeah pretty much so I I've been my own manager since I turned pro really um I how how do you cope with that with booking flights and uh, that's a, that's a job in itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like we're talking about before, uh, I, like touring at an early age, I learned how to grow up very quickly. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so I had to make sure everything was all organised. Like I'd have my proper file out. I'd get all the the fact sheet of every tournament. Try and try and find a printer wherever I was. And just, I, I, I'm very old school, I guess. I love everything on paper and, yeah. you know, just get highlighters or whatever and just make sure everything's organised. You get your thin points and um, just make sure everything is done. Otherwise, you can get so lost and so complicated. And yeah. if, if anything does happen, like, a, I don't know, a miss fly or cancel fly or, I don't know, hotels, I've had everything. I, I mean, we've been, <laughs> uh, I've done all sorts. But, yeah. Um, you just have to accept it and deal with it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and also you can't be fussy either. So you got to be very relaxed, but at the same time, you have to make sure you're, you know, you're focused and yeah. you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And, and I guess because I have done that, I've learned to just be really prepared and, you know, I, I love it. I don't really, really don't mind. Obviously I'd love to have a manager and, you know, managers, they help find sponsors and things like that. But, I, I've been doing okay on my own. I, I do love to organise everything, so it's it's okay. So, do, do you think if you had a manager, you'd be managing them anyway? <laughs> no, 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 I'll leave it to them if they want to, but I'll definitely double check everything and make sure everything's right and obviously the costs of everything. Yeah. Obviously, um, I'm always on a bit of a budget because you always want to make sure you're, you're doing the right thing. So, yeah, you always got to be on the ball with money and things like that, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So come on, Qantas, get supporting. Qantas, yes. <laughs> it's funny, it? I've actually emailed them in the past and they're like, no, you have oh. to be on the Olympic team to be anywhere near it. All right, so, okay, well, 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 we'll go for Norwegian Airlines or anyone, just anybody. <laughs> come on, sort it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, caddies, let's talk about caddies. Um, mm-hmm. I was talking to Alice uh, Houston yesterday. She yeah. has obviously ruts on the bag. Well, yeah. And as I explained to her yesterday, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. He hates being called ruts. He much prefers <laughs> to be called rutter. So she's made a commitment that she will call him rutter all season. Could you commit <laughs> to the same? I was calling Steve. <laughs> Just call him Steve. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so, so, how do caddies work with you? Um, do you have a caddy for the season, or uh, how how does that work for you normally? Yeah, I'm actually looking for a caddy. So if anyone wants to do it full time, uh, I'm more than happy to have someone on the bag. But yeah, I, I mean, I in the past, I've had friends caddy or I'd have the odd professional caddy, uh, which is awesome. But again, it comes to money because yeah. I want to make sure I pay for my caddies the right way and I want to make sure they're covered as well. So again, if I have the, the monetary backing, that would make life so much easier. Yeah. And, you know, you can just go out and play rather than thinking, oh, I, I don't have enough money to pay for my caddy, you know. So that's yeah. that's the main goal. I just want to 
be able to have a full-time caddy and especially with this awesome season now you know you you can really really bond with someone very quickly and and really get a an a team going so you know it's uh so again if anybody's interested message through the site either private message me or private message whitney Mm -hmm. on the site type whitney hillier into the top um and then connect and then go on to chat um with the new site it's going to be much much easier but I think your season is going to start before the new side starts. So um, anyone get in contact, you know, it, it, it can. I, I, I'm part of the LET Caddies group on WhatsApp and they have a proper laugh. They, they, the guys are yeah. fantastic. They're, they're such a n- n- nice bunch of guys. You get to be in a professional golf environment, which is fun. It's ex- exhilarating. But while yeah. we're talking about caddies, there's one that you know quite well, right? Yeah, I might be engaged to one. <laughs> <laughs> is that, was that showing the ring then? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you're engaged to Benji Brewer, who's the chairman yeah. of the LET Caddies Association. Um, mm-hmm. A great golfer in his own right, by all accounts. I've seen him. I've seen a few videos of him striking a ball. Yes, yes, we are very very competitive when we play, and he will never tell you, but he did win the club championships at Lincoln Golf Club last year. Did it? And I caddied for him, so. <laughs> Uh, we're on the A team. Oh, wow, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, so he's a very, very good player and he knows what he's doing and he just loves golf. He's a proper golf geek and I love it. You know, we, we all are, I guess. You know, we're obsessed with golf. It's one of the best games in the world. So, you know, but... Uh, I think once yeah. that bug gets you, it's, it, it's in You've every it. part of your DNA, <laughs> isn't it? You know. Absolutely. <laughs> but so, so, I mean, people are going to naturally ask the question, um, if your fiancé is a caddy, and you're looking for a caddy what's going on there <laughs> uh no he's caddy for me in the past and i absolutely love it when he caddies for me but it's just you know it's nice when he's doing his own thing and he's caddying for somebody else and and again for monetary reasons you know yeah. it's it's a lot easier that way but no i obviously would love to have him on the back but no it's, it's all good yeah he's yeah. got he's got some uh some good players so that he's think- caddy for so I watched uh, an interview. Yeah, I watched an interview with you recently when somebody said, "What is your most prized possession?" <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> what was your answer? Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until you get the new pin clubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That that'll be my new prized possession, the new putter or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, a very important aspect of what you guys do, I think, is, is representing girls in golf. Okay, mm-hmm. and it's it, for me, it's probably the biggest growth market or potential growth market if it's yeah. managed in the right way and done in the right way. So, do you have any? You, you might not have any thoughts on it, and, and, and don't feel pressure to answer this. But do you have any thoughts on how we can encourage younger younger girls to get into the game? And if you were to give them any advice, if if somebody was to give you advice when you started out that you didn't have, what would it be? Yeah, I, I mean, just for the golf clubs or anyone who would want to help the girls get involved, it's just make them feel welcome because there's so many places where, you know, girls would get shut down because they are a girl maybe or they're a little too young. Um, I mean, I was very lucky uh, in the sense of I had a girls golf club that I was a member of oh, wow. and okay. That my particular golf club we started with over 25 girls and I was the last one left so wow, okay. yeah so um if you have you know really good junior programs you just got to keep it going because you yeah. just never know what you can produce if you just keep you know the good spirits good attitude good games you know you just just make golf fun I think, I think that's fun. it as well. It's not about striking a ball and getting it as far down in a straight line as you can. You know, yeah, have little games. Of, later. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. have games of golf um, um, bowling at, so where you knock skittles down or what have you. And, <laughs> you know, start controlling yeah. the shoulders and the arms and, you know, uh, and doing it that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just just make golf fun because, again, being a, a kid, you can either get bored very quickly or, you know, if you're not having 100% fun, you know, you might want to try another sport. But with me, I, I was lucky enough that I enjoyed it straight away because I was playing games and I learned how to, you know, chip and putt very quickly. You know, just things like that. It's just, it is the little things that make a big difference. And for any parent uh, that is trying to decide whether or not they should, you know, give their girl an opportunity or not, it's um, it's so important that 
firstly, they want to do it. And yeah. second of all, make sure they're having fun. But but don't be afraid because golf is not just a men's game. It's for everybody. It's not just like an older person's game. Again, it's for, for the younger generation as well. And I think this whole elitist, pushing. yeah, this whole elitist thing, it, it, it just yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Entry level yeah. golf. And, I, you know, I've bought golf clubs for both of my kids. And, mm-hmm. and you can spend £100 on a, a decent five set, six set yeah. golf clubs with a bag yeah. and a stand. And, and yeah. you know, that the nice thing about it is it's outside, it's fresh air, it's healthy. There is yeah. very little downside to golf mm-hmm. for children's health. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's good just for, yeah, like you said, it's just good for mentality as well. It's good for exercise and everything. But, yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you there because if you have um, – the opportunities and and like you said with golf it's um it's just a fun sport and it's i i mean obviously it, it was an elite sport yeah. back then and people might think it still is but if you're going to pay any kind of money to play any sport i think it can be expensive either way well my you know, kids it, play football as well and 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 the football boots that they choose to buy yeah, are equally as expensive yeah, as at junior right? set clubs so yeah I mean, yeah, whether whether you're playing tennis, mm. baseball, basketball, obviously you've got to pay some kind of money and, you know, you've got club fees, whatever. I mean, obviously golf, you've got to pay for your golf clubs, your golf balls, whatever. It's all part of it. But, but most clubs now with their, the way. Yeah, most clubs now with their junior sections don't charge a particular high amount. I think that the Gravesend Golf Centre down the road do a group lesson on a Saturday for kids. It's an hour and it costs five pounds per kid. Yeah, that's exactly what I did when I was in Australia. Yeah, it was five dollars for an hour session. I mean, that's, that's just incredible value. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, I, know, yeah, I know it takes a lot of time for juniors to get into it, but I, I feel like it is worth doing because it's it's such an important thing because golf is one of the best games in the world and you want it to keep going you want it to keep progressing and you want the older generations to be proud of the younger generations to yeah. want to learn and, and you golf. also want the older generation to make that their legacy yeah yeah well the, you know they they helped bring up you know I, well for me uh personally I used to play with the older ladies and the, the old, older men and they taught me how to grow up quickly they taught me etiquette which yeah. was very, very important. Like, Absolutely. it's not hard to be nice and polite, is it? So no. that, that's another key feature that I think is really important with what golf teaches you yeah, as well. Like, and, and it sets you up for business or schooling, whatever. But I just feel like the etiquette in golf has taught me to, you know, to be a, a good person at the same I, time, I just, if that makes sense. It's such a hugely important point. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, we, we, we're too quick to bash kids out there for being yeah. rude and obnoxious and horrible. But then we're happy to let them sit behind a PlayStation for five hours and do it. Yeah. Get them out in an environment where there are people of the same mindset who are there for the same reason. Teach mm-hmm. them to be respectful. Let the person, you know, play through or, you know, all these silly little things that actually as life skills growing up become yeah. hugely, incredibly valued. Yeah, valued. yeah. Yeah, just great social skills in general, which could help you in the future. And I've always thought that. And and like I've talked about before, like it helps you travel and, you know, you get to play different golf courses around yeah. the world or where, whatever you do with your golf. You, you just never know who you meet. Yeah. That's yeah. another great thing um, that I've learned uh, at my golf course. Like I, I, I'm also I'm from uh, Lincoln Golf Club, but when I grew up in uh, in Perth I, I I'm a member at Joondalup Golf Club and it's a proper resort course so what's it called Gin- ginger <laughs> <laughs> so it's an aboriginal word but it's called Joondalup oh Joondalup I beg your pardon Joondalup, yeah. I, I thought it was Gingerlup. I was thinking right my, my son's got red hair sign him up get him over to Australia <laughs> quick as you can I probably can't say that either <laughs> yeah, try and spell it now. <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> so June Dillon, uh golf club. So yeah, go on you. Yeah, so, it's, so they're a big resort course as well. So there's so many people going in and out of the golf. There's a member's side and then there's a public side. But the amount of people that go through every day and that and when I was a teenager, you know, as a kid. 
growing up, I just meet different people all the time and you just say, hi, how's it, how's your round? You know, it's just yeah. little things like that make a big difference. And, and that, that's what I think. But golf, golf is an icebreaker, isn't it? Because any, anybody yeah. you see on a golf course, you know, is there for the same reason. So it's yeah. not hard to instigate a conversation. How did you get on? How did you play today? What were the greens like? And, and yeah. it's an icebreaker and, and, and you, you end up with a massive circle of friends. I think that's a, that's a really lovely answer. I think the answer you gave was absolutely perfect. And seriously, <laughs> young kids, don't be afraid of it. You know, that when I was a kid, there's a mid Kent golf club that I'm a member of now down the road. I used to walk past it and it, it was a bit snooty it, at the time. It was... Um, it was an aspiration to become a member. You sort of mm -hmm. knew that you'd arrived in the area if you'd become a member. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's changed so much. You turn up yeah. to the club now, and after school, there'll be seven kids on the practice putting green, mm -hmm. grinding away for a couple of hours and what have you. But having the best time, getting sun on their face, air in their lungs, it's yeah. just a marvellous thing. Absolutely right. Yeah, that, that makes me happy when I see things like that because you, you just want kids to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are. You just got to enjoy the game. It's, yeah, exactly. it's just fun, isn't it? <laughs> that, that, like I said, there's, there's no downside to it. So um, let's talk about, I know you said before that you don't really have an off season because you'll be over in Australia and then back mm -hmm. to Europe and what have you. But on a day when you said, right, golf's off, the, golf's off the agenda for today, right? Park the clubs, Benji, clean my shoes or, or however, <laughs> however you manage it in your house. I don't want to suggest anything or what have you. But um, when you have a non-golf day, what, what, what's a typical day? Do you watch Netflix? Is there a particular food you like to, you know, chill out with? You know, tell me about you. I am a very relaxed person. Uh, I think you have to be if, you, if you're playing golf sometimes. You just get into that. Um, but I, lo I love uh, watching movies. And yeah, like I since the, the lockdown, I, I have joined Netflix. Uh, I actually never really watched used to watch that many TV shows. But I guess now I have the time. I've been able to watch a few. Um, but no, just, just spend time with Ben, really, and his family. That's probably the most important thing. Yeah. It's just family time because we never really get that when we're away. Like, you got to FaceTime and things like that, which is also very, very good. But it must actually, be tough with your parents in Australia. Yeah, it's been yeah. a year since I've seen them. So it's it's been a, a little while. But again, like I said, with uh, FaceTime, it does help. And I do talk to them on on little chats every day so it is all right but and it'll be extra special when you get to see them again right oh yeah definitely yeah. I can't wait <laughs> excellent yeah so, no. so big season ahead um yeah. I mean the, the, the itinerary is just incredible again we'll, like you will have seen it before in the video um yeah. but uh you know we, we you know we're behind you um all of us at CFG thank you for your content and your posts we do enjoy them um, one of the things we're aware of at CFG, there's not a huge amount of engagement yet, but that's a confidence thing. And I think mm. with the new platform, it'll be much easier for people to engage. So yeah. listen, thank you for being on, on Club Face Golf. Thank you for this chat today. I've really, really enjoyed it and got to know you better, which, which I, I hope everyone feels the same. You know, you, you, you've got such a beautiful personality. You know, we're, we're dead behind you for this season coming up. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And for everyone, you know, on, on Club Face Golf, it, don't be afraid to message me. If you have a silly question, it's never too silly. You know, we're all golfers. We all love the game. It's absolutely fine. So, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to give any insights or any, you know, answer any questions. It's uh, it's easy. Or if you want a picture of, you know, something on tour or like, or, you oh, know, I, yeah. I'm more than happy to post more of that as well. Like, on the planes or things that you don't see on tour <laughs> yeah or, or do you know what? even if you have a young daughter or someone who wants to get into yeah. golf maybe Whitney could send a, a little happy birthday message or something like that you know yeah. which you know the impact of that 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 sort of social interaction with an elite sports person could be life-changing yeah. for a child um yeah so, you know. and you never know that that child might be a major champion one day you just never know because yeah. All of these kids, if they're young and talented and if they want to do it, then then let them do it, you know. It's, and, you, uh, and somebody has to be a major champion, so why not that person? <laughs> yeah, right. right? If, if you got the opportunities, you just never know. Like my my goals and my dreams, are, mine are still there. You know, I'd love to be a, a champion like that. You know, I'd love to, I don't know, keep, keep playing for as long as I can, but you just yeah. never know unless you don't try, you know. So. Do you think yeah. you would go into coaching? I, I, I think I could. I think I could later on in life. Uh, 
again, I don't know if I'm going to have kids or whatever. Yeah. I was talking to Benji about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't um, know if I'm going to tell Benji we're having kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm pretty easy going with that. So whatever flows uh, with my life, I, yeah. I, I would love to do golf either way, whether it's coaching or management even. I really um, am. Yeah, you know, just, just help the future generation keep going or, uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. But uh, either way, as long as I'm in golf, I'm fine. <laughs> Great. So, guys, that, that was um, uh, me chatting with Whitney Hiller. So post some comments below. Make sure you like it. Share it on your socials. Um, and, again, if you're a business owner, do get in contact because I think you'd be gobsmacked at how much what you would regard as not a huge amount of money would impact and help the girls on the tour. So get behind them, support them. We'll be following you all season. Hopefully you'll be posting. Obviously your priorities will be elsewhere throughout the season, but if you get two minutes, just let us know how you're getting on, what you're, what you're thinking. And maybe we'll do this sort of interview again at the end of the season when you've won a couple of events and we can start bragging about stuff and saying, yeah, we were there with Whitney, you know. <laughs> that so. sounds good. Excellent. All right. So, guys, um, I think my next interview is going to be with Xenia Wivo, who you might know from the nice. Australian tour. Very um, good. Next week. So that'll be exciting. Um, but in the meantime, make sure you comment, like and share. And uh, let's all wish Whitney a great season. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. We'll see you on Club Face Golf. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Perfect.